everybody. Hello, and thank you for joining us on this walkthrough of the best new features of Flight Radar 24 uh, beta. We're really excited to show everybody what we've been working on for quite a long time, and I'm really excited to, uh, to be able to show this off and, and really walk through some of these great new features. I'm Ian Pechnik. I'm our director of communications at Flight Radar 24, and I'm also the co-host of our AvTalk podcast. Uh, if you haven't listened to that, highly suggest you join us every week for aviation news, interviews, views, and things like that. Um, and we do talk about some of the things that we're working on on an ongoing basis uh, more quickly than, than the live stream. Joining me today behind the scenes is my colleague, Chris Lomas, and he's going to be help managing the chat. So if you want to say hi to him, please feel free to do so in the comments. Uh, we ask that uh, any comments that you leave are on topic and respectful of uh, everyone who's decided to join us today. The topics that we're going to cover today will relate specifically to the new beta version of FlightRadar24.com. We're working on bringing all of these new features to the iOS and Android app as well. But right now, we're rolling all of these features out on flightradar24.com only. Um, some of the new features that are coming to the website are also available already in the apps. So we're going to walk through some of the new features that are just on Flight Radar 24 Beta, and you'll get a preview of how things are progressing, the new features that we're adding, and some of the things that we're still working on. If you want to follow along uh, today, you can head to flightradar24.com slash open beta and just play along uh, as we walk through things, if, uh, if that's what you want to do. So I guess the most important question is first, how do you get to the beta version of flightradar24.com? We're on the website now. We're on the main page. And when you click over to this little button over here on the right-hand side, highlight that, and you'll see a nice big button open up that says Try Out Flight Radar 24 Beta. So if you click on that, it'll take you over to the beta site. All of your settings, uh, account settings will, will come on over and you'll get this handy dandy uh, prompt. Do you really want to go to Flight Radio 24 Beta? Of course we do. That's the whole point of, uh, of what we're doing today. So we're going to go on through. Um, it'll tell you a little bit more about it, but I'm going to walk through this now so you don't have to read it on the, on the screen right now. So we're going to go to Flight Radio 24 Beta and it'll pull it up. And first things first, you'll see... A, uh, a prompt here that allows you to report a problem or a bug. Um, hopefully you uh, won't experience those, but if you do, please let us know so that we can fix them. Our team is going through every single bug report that we receive and making sure that uh, anything that needs fixing or can be improved is, is fixed or improved. Uh, you can also leave general feedback about Flight Radar 24 Beta. Uh, so if there's a feature that you really like, let us know. We love hearing about things like that. If there's a feature that you want to see added, please let us know that too. And there's also the button that lets you go back to the, the regular site if that's what you want to do. The design is different. We cleaned things up a lot. Uh, you'll see that we've moved some things around. The search bar is, is persistently located up in the top top right. Uh, you've got your account access. And we've moved a the hamburger menu. We've created a hamburger menu and moved that over. And that allows you all of the uh, access to all the things that were in the kind of top level navigation that we had across the, the top before. But we wanted to have more space on the map. So we added this hamburger menu. And now this is where you can access um, your email alerts, uh, aviation data, so flight information pages, um, uh, aircraft information pages, things like that. You can help add coverage, or you can uh, learn more about Flight Radar 24. Going back to the map, we've got our most tracked flights here. I've also uh, expanded the window a bit on my screen so that we can see the, the widgets a little bit better. Um, so if things look a little bit different to you if you're playing along at home, uh, there that's why I've kind of enlarged the window just so we can see things better when we're, when we're working on the live stream. But we've got our most tracked flights. We've got our new airport disruptions widget. 
So that's going to give you information about which airports are experiencing the highest levels of disruption uh, on a scale of zero to five. And right now it looks like airports, uh, let's see, Paris, Orly, uh, Lyon, and then London Gatwick are the, the top three. And then we've got our, our bookmarks down here. So you can bookmark an aircraft, specific aircraft, flights, airports, or a general location if you want. What we're really going to talk about today is all of the improvements that we've made to filters. Now, the biggest, biggest change is the categories. This is the most requested uh, change to Flight Radar 24 filters that um, that we've made in a very, very, very long time. Uh, it's one of the most requested features, and we're super excited that um, that it's added. Um, so, so really, really excited to to see that. Um, we're we're very happy that we've been able to to make this happen and it's a lot of fun to play around with so when you go to the website you'll see that all of the categories are are selected you can unselect all categories and it'll yell at you and say well now you can't see anything but now you can select different categories like just cargo aircraft or just military and government aircraft or let's say you want business jets and military and government aircraft. You can mix and match and, and do whichever you'd like. So this is an easy way to see different kinds of aircraft in a, um, in a category way. So we're no longer just filtering by specific aircraft type. You can certainly still do that, but that's an easier way to get a broader look at what kind of aircraft are in the air. So let's go ahead and leave that checked and go into our custom filters, or you can add a category filter here uh, from the add a new filter button down below. So this takes us into some of our custom filters. I'll just run through them real quick, and then we can do some examples of the different kinds of filters that we've got. So airline filters for an airline. Aircraft is aircraft type. Airport is airport. Route is new. So route allows you to search uh, between two airport pairs or between a country and another country or between a country and, and airport pairs. Uh, we'll dig into that a little bit more in a minute. Categories is you can set a category, um, a filter for category. So if you want to keep a persistent uh, passenger aircraft category up or a persistent military and, uh, military and government aircraft category up uh, and then filter around that additionally, you can do that as well. And then advanced takes us into um, some of the more, uh, more uh, granular filters. So we have things like call sign. This is a specific call sign that you can search for. Uh, you have a registration available. Um, Squawk is new. So Squawk, before we, we didn't have uh, the ability to, to filter on Squawks. Now you can uh, filter based on whatever Squawk you like, uh, not just the 7600 and 7700 for, for radio failure and emergency uh, where you get alerts for those. But these you can have um, whatever Squawk whatever squawk you'd like. Ground speed is uh, is about the same. Barometric altitude uh, is, is similar. And then aircraft age is new. Uh, so you can search for um, or filter for any aircraft from 1900, uh, not many of those, uh, all the way up to brand new aircraft that, uh, that came out uh, just this year off the line. And then radar, you can filter for whatever radar you'd like, whatever ADSB receiver you'd like. So if you've got one um, that you want to, uh, to filter for, you can do that. Uh, or if you have a friend and you want to see what they're tracking, you can see exactly what, um, what, uh, what aircraft you're, uh, you're looking for. So let's go back and go down the list of all of the filters and we'll play through uh, some of the some of the different filters that we can uh, that we can create beyond the categories. So for airline, we've reconfigured it so it's not just the call sign as it is on the old site. Now you can enter the the call sign of the airline or you can enter the airline name. So let's just go start searching. We're going to pick up British Airways. So you've got British Airways, 
BABAW, British Airways Shuttle, which is their short haul, and then you have British, British International Helicopters. We're interested in British Airways. So when you select that filter, it'll give you the option of painted as or operating as. So this is where the old filters um, lacked some granularity and we've made it so that you can filter aircraft based on what they look like or based on who they're operating as. So this brings in uh, any British Airways aircraft that is flying in the British Airways livery. The operating as is going to be a little bit more helpful when we go to, um, say, United Airlines in the US. Because right now you've got painted as and that will show all of the regional aircraft like Sky West operating for United. But if we have just operating as, these are going to be the aircraft that operate purely as United aircraft by United Airlines pilots and crew and not by a third party airline that's being contracted to fly for a particular airline. This will also be helpful when you're trying to filter out for some, um, some cargo aircraft and things like that or wet leasing when you have aircraft that are operating for a separate airline. So let's go ahead and um, go back, you can see that the filter is now, it's not quite saved yet, but it is remembering that I want to fil filter for United Airlines and I only want to filter for operating as United Airlines. I can also add American Airlines to the list and I want to do operating as American Airlines. Then I can click continue and then I can either add additional filters here or I can click save and this will just call uh, United and American. And then this will get saved to my saved filters list. And you'll see that I've got a few saved filters already um, that, uh, that, are, that are here. But let's go back to add a new filter. Actually, let's turn this one off. So the other thing that we've done is you can add multiple filters at the same time by just checking these boxes. So uncheck this and it'll take everything away. You can also delete the filter straight away or you can edit it because say I wanted to add um, Delta. I can add Delta to the same filter, click continue and then save it as it is. And now I have Delta flights there as well. You can also rename the filter after you've added something or taken something away. That's fine too. And then just delete and delete. Not a problem. Adding an aircraft type filter used to be um, a, a problem because we only accepted uh, or we didn't only accept exact matches. So for instance, one of the biggest complaints was if you wanted to see C-17s, you would also see Cessna C-172s. It was such a big complaint, we added it to the tooltip uh, that you can see on the screen. So um, one of the things that uh, we've done now is made it so it's an exact match. It'll search from the list. So you can, add, you can also choose whatever you typed in as an ICAO code if it is one. But if we just wanna see Boeing C-17s, then we can click this and there we're going to, going to see them. You can also begin searching by name. So by the, the aircraft name. So we've got all sorts of uh, Airbus aircraft here. Uh, let's go ahead and select the uh, A220-100, A220-300 and oh, why not the Beluga? There we go, just for fun. So now we've got those three, we can click continue and then we can save that filter as well. Or we can take this one out and we'll say, you know what, we just wanna search for or filter for the, the blue goods and we'll leave that one in. So aircraft filters um, are available for um, the, that you can filter by the name or you can type in, if you know the, um, the ICAO code, you can also bring that up and you'll see that uh, that there as well. 
Uh, airport filters are exactly what they they say they are. Um, it's filterable by IATA code, KO code, or city. So you can search for the airport however you want. You'll see the list pop up, and then you can select the, the particular airport that you want. Once you've done that, you can select either inbound, outbound, or both. Uh, so if we want to see flights that are just leaving Stockholm, we can do that, and then we can click continue again and save again. Root is a new filter, and I love it. It's absolutely fantastic for if you want to see um, if you want to see aircraft flying between two cities or between two countries or a country in a city. It's it's a really great tool uh, to see where flights are going and kind of track them in an, in a new way. And it's another one of the things that we've had a lot of users ask for, and I'm really excited that we we get to show it to you now. Uh, let's just take uh, New York and London. Uh, so we'll say from London, uh, from London Heathrow, and from London Gatwick. And then we'll do to New York, uh, let's say New York JFK, New York Liberty, Newark. Continue, and then this will show, and you'll see that the preview of the filter, once you start entering things, will show up, and it will be modified as you go along. So these are all of the flights that are traveling from the two London airports that we filtered for to the two New York area airports that we filtered for. And you can flip it around. So because it's uh, early in the day in the U.S. and and late or later in the afternoon still in in London, there are many fewer flights traveling eastbound. The the relatively few daytime flights compared to the more numerous westbound flights that are traveling right now, and that number will switch overnight. So that's another uh, really powerful way to to filter flights, but you can also do it by country. So we could say United Kingdom to United States. And that'll show us a much larger number of flights uh, because we're not just filtering for the uh, we're not just filtering for the particular airports. We're now filtering for the entire country uh, and not just New York and London, but the whole of the UK to the whole of the United States. But we could also work this down to say, well, we just want to see UK to to New York, and that would be fine too. So now we're not just seeing flights from from London; we're seeing flights from from Manchester um, and uh, and what have you. So this is, I think, a really powerful tool uh, now that we've got the root filterings in. And I'm really excited to, to hear what you all think of it and how you plan on using it. Uh, please let us know in the comments which of these filters and features you think are, are going to be the best and which you're, you're enjoying the most so far. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I really love to see as someone who's using Flight Radar 24 day in and day out is what other people are using it for. Uh, hearing about their experiences and what they find interesting, uh, the, the random flights that people find, or, or the really important ones that people are tracking. Uh, so, so please let us know in the comments which which you're liking the best, um, and uh, and what uh, what you're looking forward to to using. The category filters is just that, um, but it's it's in two places. Uh, so you can you can filter based on that, and then you can go into advanced with the call sign, uh, a specific call sign. So if you want to filter for just a, a single flight, or you can filter um, for um, for multiple flights that have a starting um, a starting you know code, and then go on from there. Because what we've done now is added wildcards to certain filters, and call sign is one of them. So you can use uh, the wildcard at the beginning or at the end of a call sign filter. And so that will, just to provide an example, UAL1, if we add that, would only show UAL1. 
one. But if we add UAL one star, now we're going to see all the flights that have UAL one and then an added call sign after that. Uh, so a helpful filter, um, but more importantly, the wildcards really come in handy. Registration, same thing. So if you do, here, I'll leave that up on the, on the screen just for a little bit in case anyone wants to, to pause later and, and, and read that. But all of these are just live tool tips available on FlightRadar 24 Beta. Uh, so there you go with the, the, the multiple registration filters, or you can use a wildcard. What allows you to see multiple uh, aircraft from all over uh, all over the world registered with the the D uh, German registration. So you can use these filters uh, in combination in a single filter. So for instance, let's go and choose, um, let's choose an airline that has a lot of aircraft in the air and that's flying to a number of, dis number of dis different destinations. Let's choose Qantas um, because they're, they're all over that. These are all of the aircraft that are painted in uh, Qantas, uh, Qantas livery. So we're going to continue, but let's say we only want to filter the Qantas 787-9s. Oh, not seven. That would be interesting. That would be a new order information. 787-9. There we go. And let's say we only want to search the ones that are going to Sydney filter the only ones that are going between Sydney. So now we can call this Qantas 787 Sydney. And now we've got a saved filter that includes all of the Qantas 787-9s that are going to Sydney. And so you can do this with multiple filters and multiple ways. And you'll see that when you go to create a new filter, you have a, uh, a blank slate. So when you go in to create a new filter, it's just going to take you back to as if you had no filters active. And then when you get out of this, it'll, it'll show you this. Uh, you'll see that you have one active filter up here. Um, so now we have two active filters. So what I've done here with this filter is you're now seeing Qantas 787s that are going to or from Sydney, but you're also seeing domestic US flights. So all flights that are traveling from a US airport to another US airport. And, and just for fun, we'll add in the, the Finnair Moomin aircraft. So all of these things can be combined. You can turn off the domestic US if we just want to see the, the Qantas 787 Sydney. And you can um, then turn off the, the thinner movement. You can, you can have all of these um, either on or turn them off. You can check and uncheck them. They're all saved automatically. So that way you can just check or uncheck them as you want to, to use them. And you'll you'll notice a, a neat little thing up here. Uh, if you're a fan of uh, the older version of Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, the receivers in Chicago that we have, um, the the airport code there. So these are some of the the new features that we've put into uh, filters. I, I think that it's some of the, the most exciting stuff that we've done in a very long time. Um, one of the biggest questions we get is, when is this coming to the app? Is it in the app? Can I get it in the app? When is it coming to the app? The answer is, we're working on it. Uh, and yes, it will all be coming to the app. What we're working on doing is making sure that your experience with Flight Radar 24 is as good as it can possibly be, and as similar as it can possibly be across the um, across the the platforms. So on the web, in the iOS app, and in the Android app, we want you to be able to take things across 
wherever you are and be able to use them on the platform that you're on at that time. Uh, so that's the goal. We're definitely keen to get these things released a, a, as quickly as possible. Um, obviously, there, there's a lot of changes that are happening here. So one of the things um, that we're working on is, is making sure that uh, we get it right so that everyone can have a really enjoyable time. So these are the new filters on Flight Radar 24 Beta. The way you get there for anyone who, who's just joining the, the proceedings is directly, you can go to flightradar24.com slash open beta, or you can click on the button and uh, on the, on the right-hand side of the screen. So we're already in beta, but if you are not in Flight Radar 24 Beta, the... Um, the button here would take you to Flight Radar 24 Beta. So before we go, the one thing I do want to touch on are the widgets. So widgets are these panels on the left-hand side of the screen. And those are controlled in the, in the widgets uh, menu. So you can move these around and turn them on and turn them off. Most track flights tells you exactly that's exactly what that is. It's our top 10 most tracked flights. So whatever flights our users are following in mass, we have um, we have those listed. Usually the the top 10 are, are often grouped for, for certain reasons. So today we've got um, most tracked flights. Most of them are going uh, are going to, to Madeira because it's been very windy. And it's always interesting to see those aircraft try and um, try and land uh, and uh, and land safely in, into that crosswind. Statistics tells you how many aircraft you're seeing on the map and also how many aircraft we're tracking in total. And we break that down by data source. Uh, so ADSB, uh, terrestrial ADSB, space-based ADSB, MLAT, uh, radar. Uh, aircraft and estimation, or some other data sources as well. Airport disruptions is new, and we touched on that a little bit earlier, but this is the, uh, the most disrupted airports at the moment, so highest delays and cancellations. Then we have bookmarks, so you can quickly access uh, your favorite aircraft, uh, your favorite individual aircraft, your favorite flight number. Uh, say you, you really like uh, SQ-22, which is the Singapore Airlines flight that, that operates between Singapore and New York. It's the longest flight in the world. That's your favorite. You can add that as a bookmark. And then you can also see your last click flights. Um, so if, you're, if you want to follow a particular flight for, for a while and then click off and go see something else, uh, but you want to check on it later, uh, the last click flights widget's a really good one for that. And then you can see latest tweets, latest blog posts. Uh, if you don't follow us on social media, highly recommend you do. We find some really great stuff and post it there. Um, we also have uh, some fantastic content on our blog, if I do say so myself, uh, about uh, flight tracking specifically, but also aviation more generally. We hope to, uh, to help you learn about what you're seeing on Flight Radar 24. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And uh, please, please, please uh, email us. Um, if, if you have questions, uh, you can always email us at support, or you can uh, use the feedback tool on the Flight Radar 24 beta to leave us beta-specific um, beta specific feedback. Uh, so you can uh, report a problem or a bug specific to beta. You can leave feedback specific to beta, or you can just go back to the regular site if you want to go back to uh, whatever you were working on over there. Um, Play around with Flight Radar 24 Beta. Please, please, please enjoy it. Uh, use the filters. Let us know uh, what you like. Leave a comment here or, or let us know in the feedback. We really want to hear what you're liking, what you would like to see changed, what you would like to see added. Uh, and uh, this is a work in progress. This is, this is a, a beta site. So um, there will be more changes. There will be more new features. And we're really excited to show you those. So we'll be back with another live stream in the future, walking through all of the uh, new features as we move closer to, to pushing this site live and um, 
And we really appreciate all of your support and everyone who's already looked through the site and, and, and left feedback. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll have much more to share about other new features coming out. Uh, we've got some great stuff in the works that's not specifically related to, to filters and, and the things we've talked about today. So we'll hopefully have more, much more to share in, uh, in the near future. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ian Pechnik uh, here at Flight Radar 24. We really appreciate you joining us today and happy tracking.